Welcome back guys! In today's video, the Jeep gets some tower speakers and guess what? My husband managed to break the glass. Stay tuned! But of course it's Monday, so things have to happen and... This is what happened. <laughs> now I have to clean everything up before going ahead with the video. And of course I have nobody to blame but myself. I was trying to take the roof off and this is not how you take the roof off. <laughs> no. So basically what happened was I opened the back glass and I was just gonna readjust because I have these the hooks in my garage that hold the roof. Well, one of them, on this part of the ceiling that is missing now caught one of the gas struts as i was pulling out and boom it sounded like a shotgun going off and now i have glass literally everywhere it's even inside my can-am can you imagine if i didn't have tents on there how much more glass i would have been everywhere like this is already nuts I guess it's gonna give me a reason to vacuum out the sand. All right, now that I have everything cleaned up, it is time to get to work. So I purchased everything from Creative Audio as a bundle, the speakers, the amp, and the pods. And honestly, it was a great price. Their shipping is super fast. So if you guys are looking to purchase anything for your boat, UTV, or Jeep, or any stereo really, check out Creative Audio. They always have coupon codes available and use coupon code NEW10 to get yourself 10% off for new customers. Even the sound system in my Can-Am Maverick was purchased through Creative Audio. Audio.net. Awesome people, awesome customer service, and I 100% recommend them. So to be able to mount the speakers in the back of the Jeep, I am using the Deviate Off-Road Interior Roll Bar Mounting System. And it's basically made for you to be able to hang your speakers or your lighting in the back of your Jeep. And it is so easy to install that my four-year-old daughter spent 20 minutes and she got it in all by herself with a little bit of help of me holding it. So the amplifier in the bundle is a KXMA 400.2, it's a two channel amp and originally I was going to mount it underneath the rear cover but then I decided that I kind of needed that storage to throw all my tow ropes and recovery gear in so I decided that I'm going to mount it underneath the seat. So I removed the two factory bolts holding the bottom of the passenger rear seat and flipped the seat up to find a location where I'm going to mount the amp. Now I decided to mount it towards the center of the Jeep because later on down the road once I replace all the factory speakers and add another amplifier I am going to need more room to mount another amp right next to it. You can mount the amp anywhere since this amp is water resistant. It has conformal coated circuit boards, front mounted controls are protected behind the sealed gasket so you don't have to worry about moisture getting in it or sand or dirt or anything in that case. So to install the amplifier, I drilled directly into the tub after marking the location and installed riv nuts for machine screws going through the amplifier. Now that I had my amp location, I was able to run my amp wires from the battery through the factory grommets and through the factory wire loom holders in the Jeep to the location of the amp. The next step was to assemble the tower speaker pods and add the speakers to them and install them on the mount. Before I mounted up the speakers to the pods, I did have to solder on some pigtails for the RGB controller in order to be able to control the LED lights in the speaker. And also, Kicker provides a little grommet for you inside the pod in order for you to be able to run this wire through. They also include these connection enclosures that are water resistant, but in this case, we're not gonna be using them since the tower pods have pre-installed connectors and I'm only gonna be using shrink wrap to keep it all in place. Place once it's connected. It's also pretty nice that the enclosures come with polyfill. The speakers come with your choice of color for grills. They include the charcoal ones and the white ones. 
So the DVA tube that I'm mounting it on is actually a smaller diameter than what the adapters are included with the tower mounts. Now you could buy them from Kicker separately and they're about 40 bucks for a pair and you would need two pairs or you could just get creative and figure out your own spacers. So now that I have both of them mounted on the ends for the middle ones, I am going to have to trim this DV8 mount in order to let me mount two more speakers on there. And I whipped out the Dremel, that didn't work so well, so I decided to go the Sawzall route and it worked perfectly. And as you can see, all four 8 inch speakers fit perfectly. Now comes the not so fun part of doing all the tedious wiring. So the speakers are four ohm speakers and I am gonna be wiring them two speakers per channel in a two ohm load configuration. And here is a little diagram for you to see what it looks like. So once the speakers and the RGB LEDs were all wired up, I hit the wires through the pillar trim underneath the carpet right to the amplifier. So the nice thing about the kicker amplifier is that it allows you to connect high inputs directly to the RCAs with the use of their Kissel. And it's basically tapping into your speaker wires. Now, since I already have an installed subwoofer that I tapped into the rear sound bar, I'm gonna be hooking up to those wires. But if you don't have that, you could hook up directly to the speaker wires from your rear sound bar. Once I had all the wiring done, I did mount the amp right directly to those rib nuts, cleaned up my wiring, and turned it on to test it. As far as the LED lighting in the speakers, I did hook it up to one of my existing RGB LED controllers. I'll put a link in the description to one of the ones that I have. So the big question is, how does it sound? And I gotta say, the factory speakers are not existent now. So I have to replace those. I will be doing another video of replacing all the factory speakers to Kicker. And here's a quick sound clip. And actually in the clip, you can hear a little bit of rattling. Well, that rattling is actually coming from my garage door. And you'll hear it at the end. It sounds clean, crisp, and it's way better, especially with the roof off, cruising at highway speeds, the music is nice and clear and I can hear everything great. So there you guys go, another project completed on the Jeep JL, and I am extremely happy with it. And the nice thing about having the DV8 mount, I was able to install a chase light on the back of the Jeep. And as far as the glass goes that I broke, well, who needs it? I don't run my roof almost ever. My Jeep is topless year round, even in the snow. I wanna thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, make sure you hit the like button, smash the subscribe button. I have a lot more content on the way on the Jeep and the Can-Am. Make sure to follow me on Instagram and I'll put all the links in the description on all the stuff that I used. And also check out creativeaudio.net for all your audio needs. And I will see you in the next video. Later.